Good evening. I can't get over the great view there is from here. I've never had a chance to stand here before, of course. But in keeping with the, um, the great man, St. Patrick himself, and his confession, I need to begin with a small admission myself. And the first admission I'd like to make to you is that some people get very excited when they hear that Sister Deirdre McKenna is going to be speaking or is going to be in a venue. Uh, unfortunately, it's because they think I'm Sister Breach McKenna. Um, so for those of you who came to hear Sister Breach McKenna, sorry. The second admission I'd like, I'd like to make early on uh, tonight is to say that I am probably not going to tell you anything you don't already know about St. Patrick. It's not looking good so far, sure it isn't. And the third thing I'd like to admit to you is, and you know, it'll become all too evident very soon, is that I'm not a preacher. But what I will do is share a few thoughts that I've had on the theme of this year's uh, novena, which is living in right relationship with God. <coughs> and because I'm a wee bit nervous standing here in Newry Cathedral in the presence of yourselves, your good selves and his grace, I'm going to rely maybe more heavily on me notes if that's all right. So forgive me if I'm looking down a lot. Maya Angelou is an American poet, and she said, do the best you can until you know better, and then do better. So at 17, I entered the convent in Dungannon, and in my innocence then, and, and possibly a wee touch of arrogance, I was going to do great things for God. I was going to live a heroic life. A heroic life of holiness. And I thought humility is always a quality that you hear associated with holy people, so a bit of humility as well, I'd, I'd have that as well. And that gradually, I would work my way up. In a short time, I thought, if I, if I kind of concentrated hard and focused on it, to become the first Saint Deirdre, because there isn't one so far. I was kilt trying to be good, and kilt trying to be discovered by the other sisters, being good, that they'd be tripping over me holiness, and they'd spot it early on in this young prodigy. I devoured the lives of the saints, all those books in the convent library, so that I would have a good overview of what I was up against. And then I noticed very quickly a kind of a common theme in those lives of great suffering and at times persecution. And I thought that's not that appealing. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun either. So despite my best efforts, even if they were a bit sporadic at times, years passed and I settled into a life of what I can only call delightful ordinariness. I had to revise my ambitions and I resolved then to be the best ordinary person that I could be. And I committed myself to try and live in such a way as to ensure that anyone that I was in contact with would be somehow a bit better off because I was in contact with them. That they would feel built up or encouraged by me rather than diminished in any way or, or, or pulled down or criticized. 
and that when I would meet people that they would feel affirmed by me. I resolved that I wouldn't gossip about other people. I said, I'm not going to gossip or talk badly of other people. And where there are conversations where people are being criticised or spoken about harshly, I won't participate in those. And in fact, I'll try and challenge those conversations. And I wouldn't, I, I try not to become cynical about life or cynical about things or negative because that just drags down everybody's energy. I resolved that I would try and live a fairly simple life as well, that I would walk very softly on the earth and therein honour what the Pope has more recently called us to in Laudate Si. And I'll just quote from Pope Francis where he says, living our vocation to be protectors of God's handiwork is essential to a life of virtue. It is not optional or a secondary aspect of our Christian experience. So right relationship with God for me has to include some sense of being in right relationship with myself, with who I am, and that might sound odd, but what I mean by that is that I would have a good self-respect. And if you think maybe some of you would be familiar with like Facebook, for example, some of the information that is shared, just thrown out to the whole world, is such an exposure of people's personal lives that it can be very risky and can leave you very vulnerable. So that to be in right relation with yourself, you would have a sense of self-respect, a sense of yourself as good, essentially good, because each of us is made in the image and likeness of God. And also a sense of being self-caring. And very often people are applauded for their selflessness, even to the point where they exhaust themselves. And, and I know some of you, you know people like that. But that a healthy sense of self, a good relationship with yourself, must include self-care. You have to be sensible about your own health and your own energy. Right relations for me, right relations with God, also must include, and I know you listened to this on, if you were here on Tuesday evening, um, I know you listened to this from, from um, Philip, the speaker that evening to Philip, when he said it must include right relations with others. And that is very simple in that it involves being courteous. Now, I don't know if it happens in Newry. It probably doesn't happen, but I, I'm aware of it happening in other parts of the country, where if a driver cuts in in front of you, you could be tempted maybe to say a bad word. I know it doesn't happen in Hill Street because the driving is impeccable eh, and parking as well. But to, have, to be more courteous, I suppose, as a driver is one of the best examples. If someone doesn't acknowledge me when I let them in, I can find myself saying, I'd nearly want to pass you again just to hold you up, because you hadn't the manners to thank me for letting you in. But that's about me, it's not about them at all. And am I going to allow their behaviour to dictate my behaviour when I want to be courteous? Right relations with others has to involve being honest in my dealings with other people, being truthful, to be respectful of them, and to be compassionate rather than critical. To be compassionate. And as I mentioned already, the Pope has reminded us that right relationship with God must include a sense of being in right relationship with our earth home. 
That's how Pope Francis describes our planet Earth. And that, that means that we would more consciously maybe think about reducing our spend, about recycling more, more enthusiastically, about reusing, about maybe making more sustainable choices, and about having regard for all of God's creation and creatures, not just the two-legged humans. So right relationship with God for me must include compassion and mercy for myself, for others, for the earth, the community of life. Because that's the only way I can measure whether I'm in right relationship with God or not. Tyre de Chardin, who was way ahead of his time, he was a Jesuit writer, he said, the day will come when after harnessing the ether, the winds, the tides and gravity, we will harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, for the second time in the history of the universe, we will have discovered fire. Isn't that beautiful? If we harness for God the energies of love. Mother Teresa, <clears throat> one of my great heroes, was an extraordinarily ordinary woman, wasn't she? And she prayed, People are often unreasonable and self-centered, but forgive them anyway. And if you're kind, people might accuse you of having ulterior motives, but be kind anyway. And if you're honest, people might cheat you, but be honest anyway. And if you find happiness, people might be jealous, but be happy anyway. The good that you do today may well be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough, but give the best you have anyway. For you see, in the end, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them. Three weeks ago today, we buried my father. Daddy was 87, God bless him. And he was a huge personality and presence in the lives of us, his children and grandchildren. Daddy lived a very simple life. He, he was honest in his dealings with others. He was a generous man. And thanks to mom, he was hospitable to any and all who called into our house. He was full of humour and story and music. He was no saint. But I'm not going to speak ill of my father now in Newry Cathedral. Daddy prayed for years, as do so many of us Catholics, for the grace of a happy death. And despite living with the most debilitating effects of COPD and the terror engendered by not being able to get enough breath. Daddy died peacefully and quietly at home in the presence of Mum, my sister, two of my brothers, the district nurse and the priest. Talk about an answer to prayer. As a farmer, Daddy instinctively walked gently on the earth, planting as often as he dug up leaving fallow the soil that provided so richly of its fruit, and by marking the time by the changing of the seasons, the birds of the air, and any subtle and not so subtle changes in weather. And since Daddy's death, I have been praying with a, a beautiful translation of St. Patrick's breastplate called I Arise Today. Some of you may be familiar with it. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, swiftness of wind. God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me. 
I arise today. For this is our faith, that if we live in right relationship with God, we will share eternity with God. Let me leave you then this evening with this very familiar prayer, and may it help each one of us live with integrity and compassion for ourselves, for each other, and for our earth home. Christ within me, Christ before me, Christ above me, Christ below me, Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. May God bless and protect each one of us.